I would contend most managers have no freaking clue what their people should be doing because they have not taken the time and they don't have the cur- they haven't had taken the time to written it down and then they don't have the courage to actually coach somebody on here's where I need you to be. So you need to have all those systems. So you need a really good specification for the role. That's how you get an A in the role. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. Josh Cantwell. If you love entrepreneurship and investing in real estate, then you are in the right place. Josh is the CEO of Freeland Ventures Real Estate Private Equity and has personally invested in well over 500 properties all across the country. He's also made hundreds of private lender loans and owns over 1,000 units of apartments. Josh is an expert at raising private money for deals, and he prides himself on never having had a boss in his entire adult life. Josh and his team also mentor investors and entrepreneurs from all over the world. He doesn't dream about doing deals. He actually does them, and so do his listeners and students. Now sit back, listen, listen learn, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So hey, welcome back to Accelerated Investor. How are you? I am so excited to be with you. Thanks for joining me and thanks for all the feedback we've been getting from all of our subscribers and members inside of our private Facebook group and online on YouTube, iTunes, wherever you find this podcast or video. We've just had tons of people sharing it, reviewing it, um, putting it all over social, all the social media platforms. Just want to say thanks for that. Today, I have a special treat for you. Um, I am, as you know, fanatical about building a business. And the only way you can really build a business is through a couple things. One, technology, technology that helps you do things quicker, faster, bigger. But ultimately, through people. People is what makes a business grow. It doesn't matter if you look at a business 100 years ago like the Ford Motor Company uh, or you talk to people who have built amazing businesses like Google and Facebook. The technology is one thing, but the people using the technology is ultimately what builds an amazing organization and amazing culture. Um, so I have a fantastic guest for you. His name is Rick Crossland. He is a internationally known speaker and strategist around hiring A players. He's a regular commentator on Inc.com and Fortune.com and writes for those uh, organizations. He does very high level uh, business uh, strategy around hiring the right people. He's fanatical about hiring A players. I'm fanatical about building businesses around high players. And I really thought you would benefit from my discussion with Rick. So Rick, welcome to Accelerated Investor. How are you doing today? Hey, Josh, I'm doing wonderful. Can't wait to dig into the topic with you and your listeners. Absolutely. So, Rick, tell me about your passion for A players. Where did the passion come from? Was it, you know, a, a bad hire? Was it a business that somebody built that was demolished by a C player? I'm curious to know where the passion comes from. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I wish I'd known that question beforehand. Maybe, maybe just just a tad bit about more my background. So uh, sure. all that that you told is correct. I do that in the guise as, a, as an executive coach. And I got into this business because I had an executive coach when I was at Ford Motor. His name was Harry Cohen. I thought Harry had the coolest business in the world. And uh, so when I had the chance to, uh, you know, build my own business, uh, I, I had options and, and I embarked. This is my 13th year of executive coaching. Nice. And so when you think of it, right, and, and I use this as an analogy, right? When we hop in an airplane, when we get on a, uh, we're ready for surgery, I don't think too many of us want B player pilots or surgeons either flying our aircraft or Absolutely doing surgery. Not. You're right. But for some reason in business, there's a lot of B player apologists, right? And I don't know if it's some, you know, kind of deep belief that people are due jobs, et cetera. So for some reason, as I say, what it really matters, like in aircraft, surgery, sports, or your kids, academics, uh, we won't tolerate Bs or Cs. But for some reason in business, uh, a lot of owners, and, and, and one of the things that I ask, and I just wrote this up today, I wrote 10 points of a great client. One is you're willing to top grade your team to 100% A players. 
and we'll probably talk about top grading today. What top grading means is you're uplifting every single level of the organization. You're moving your your C's to B's in route to being an A. And it's interesting because I was doing a podcast, very nice person. You probably know her. And she's like, we go through all this. And I'm like, you know, no B player apologist. Like, but of course, Rick, you can't have a team of all A's. I contend you can. It happens all the time. Right. Now, in many cases, you have a small percentage of your team in flux. But those B players need to have a performance plan. I would rather coach people up rather than out. But you've got to be willing. It's the best team money can buy. Your team has a salary cap. I have a salary cap. We need to fill that with the absolute best person at every position. And every position is important from reception to operations to sales to finance. None is more important than the others. It's like parts of a body. And each one for the money paid. And and there are differentials in those reception versus CEO to be a, a cute example you got to have the best available at every single, if you're going to truly win and have an unfair advantage versus your competition. And Rick, I think it's interesting because I've I've only been an entrepreneur my whole life, right? I'm 43 years (laughs) old. I've never had a real boss, right? I've been an entrepreneur for 21 years since I graduated from college, actually started as an entrepreneur when I was 21 years old in college. And so it's interesting. I think there's this myth that A players are expensive, And Mm -hmm. truly, that's not really the case. You have a position. Let's say you're going to hire a sales position for $100,000 a year plus bonus. You're going to have A players, B players, and C players hire for that $100,000 position. And being able to differentiate an A from a B, certainly an A from a C, is a massive difference. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pay an A player $200,000 for the same same position. So I think right. it, it, it really comes down to two things, in my opinion, and I definitely want to hear your take on all this, but what I've experienced in real business over the past 22 years is that one, there's the perception that A players are more expensive and they're not. And secondly, there's the perception that I just need the job done today. So I think we get impatient and we're not patient enough to hire the right people who can then have a huge, massive impact on our business long term. So that's my immediate take on why people are thinking they, they can't have or can't afford A players, which was which is just on my mind. You have a tremendous amount of experience with this because you've been doing it for 13 years and as, as an executive coach. Um, but I am still interested in you answering my first question is, is where did it come from? Where did your passion for this begin? Yeah. So really, you know, when coaching and I'll kind of go back to the beginning, uh, had a chance to do a podcast just like this with the great Michael Gerber, uh, Michael E. Gerber is how he prefers to be called of the e fame. And you need to build those processes first, right? So in the beginning, somebody at your organization knew what was going on and you're able to train on it. And that is a big part back to being a savvy investor, you know, do have you built something that has uniqueness to it and you have systems and processes for everything you do, including the intake of talent. That said, when you know that, I actually have something called an A player agreement. Your listeners can find that on my website. That is a job description on steroids. And when you do that, you know what you're looking for. And I would contend most managers have no freaking clue what their people should be doing because they have not taken the time and they don't have the courage. They haven't had taken the time to written it down. And then they don't have the courage to actually coach somebody on here's where I need you to be. So you need to have all those systems. So you need a really good specification for the role. That's how you get an A in the role. Then you have all the training involved to get somebody there. Now we go out in the marketplace. And Josh, I 100% agree with you. I'll pay 5%. I'll pay a 10% premium for an A player head-to-head all day long. Mm -hmm. And I I can't tell you how many times somebody has an $85,000 position and they won't go to 87 when there's a clearly better candidate. (laughs) It just blows my mind. So absolutely, but you need to know what you're looking for. In the end of 2019, recruiting is brutal. We just got a message from LinkedIn that our messages are lower than normal. That's because the market's so tight. In that Mm -hmm. case, you need to have angles. Like, I need to have feeder groups to me, uh, and business need feeders. Like, where can I get A potentials that I can actually build up this talent? Maybe taking our 80,000, maybe there's a $68,000 candidate that with some development, I can have doing 90% of that $80,000 job or that $85,000 job. Right. It's amazing that um, the people are out there, right? It is really, really tight right now. However, 
<clears throat> oh, people are always on the move, right? People might not like their job because of their boss. They might not like their job because of the office they sit in. They might not like their job because of the commute. I have people that work for me now simply because we're in the suburbs, right? They were happy at a former job. So people are always on the move. So there's this, there's, there's no shortage of talent if you have a, an amazing culture and the ability to constantly be looking for talent. So right. let's let's take a step back for a second. Help me define in your mind and when you're coaching your executives and your businesses, what exactly is an A player? Well, how do you so, define it? Easy definition. Top 10% of the market for the compensation paid. So we have A players. And a lot of times when we're looking, we have a range. Uh, that's one definition. The other one is you would enthusiastically rehire them. So think, I'll just take a pause at that. Ask a CEO at the bar. Hey, if your team right now, how many would you uh, enthusiastically hire? By the way, strategically, they said their team's fantastic and they differentiate with people. And they'll say 60%, right? So that's not really a differentiated people strategy. Right. Then they have their sip and sip, second sip of their scotch or bourbon. And they're like, well, not so fast, 50%, right. 40%. And that number drops like a stone. And the you know really, when you look at that and you look at all the frustrations that you have and why work is not getting done, why execution isn't done, it's because of B players. We probably won't talk much today about C players because you shouldn't have any C players on your team. If you do, you got big problems, right? Right. You, you might have nepotism issues. You might have, you know, you promise somebody's granddad he'd always have a job. Never do that, by the way. Uh, it's pay for performance. And you're, good, you're as good as your last performance. You know that as an entrepreneur. I certainly know that. Uh, so, so no entitlements. So those are the first two, and then I'll, I'll conclude with the third. So top 10% of the industry, you'd enthusiastically uh, rehire. The last part is they need to model your core values. And an interesting question, let's just take sales for a second, and you find a candidate who, and I'll use a polite term, they're a jerk. Right. A lot of people are like, well, we're going to put them in the middle of Kansas. What harm can they do? They're just going to work with the territory. But if you really believe your core values, you wouldn't hire a jerk. So never right. hire a jerk or worse. And so that's really important. Are people oozing your core values? You know, if one of your core values is promptness, they ooze promptness. If one of your values is, core, is, com is customer service, they ooze customer service, right? Down to the point we can actually measure it. Love it. That's fantastic. Now, <clears throat> Why don't more entrepreneurs, business owners, in, the, in my case, guys that manage money, private equity, real estate investing businesses, multifamily investors, why don't entrepreneurs in general, the, the CEO, somebody sitting in my seat, why don't they or why have they failed so miserably at hiring A players? What are some core recurring themes that you've seen or complaints that you've seen of why they haven't found A players, can't retain A players, can't source A players, don't have more A players on their team? So the short answer to that is they're incongruent. And let me get into that. And, and the other way I could answer that was I could have said, Josh, I wish I really knew because there's no rational reason to do it. The sure. other reason, by the way, is fear. Is they really don't know what they're looking for the incongruence is they talk a great game about people. If, if I had a dime for every leader who tells me he's a great leader, but then when you ask his team or her team, they're terrible at leadership. So there's just, sure. there's just real incongruency between how people view themselves as transcendental leaders. Yet, and here's how you keep them honest, by the way, they can't be an A player leader unless their team is 100% A players or 80, 90% and they've got development plans on their only remaining Bs. Because you got to be like, uh, like a Mike Shashevsky, a John Wooden level coach. And by the way, coaching, there's a lot in the literature that coaching is actually the highest form of leadership right now. You know, take a Mike Shashevsky at Duke, uh, take Ryan Day at Ohio State now. I mean, yeah. a, a first year coach talking. who this might be the best Ohio State team ever following, following a Hall of Fame level coach he might get talent better. His culture might actually be better. So you're recruiting. Are you, you know, uh, here's a fun one. Well, Mike Krzyzewski and, and Ryan Day, they're both multimillionaires. You know, they can afford the time to be in the recruits' living rooms. And they are still in their top recruits' living rooms, selling the recruits, selling the parents on their program. Well, 
well, wait a second. You told me you had a multi-million business. So why are you different really fundamentally than Ryan Day or Mike Krzyzewski? You own a multi-million dollar business. You tell me people are important, but you're not recruiting as hard as them. And the recruiting is only sure. the one part of it. Are you coaching as hard? Are you willing to stick your neck out and make people uncomfortable to build the systems process and demand the excellence of an A player? Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's fantastic. And I was thinking that whole time while you were talking about the guys that already have money or already made it in business or have a million dollar company or a multi-million dollar company or the multi-million dollar coach. I was thinking also about the guy that's just starting, right? The guy that's just starting his business, like, and, and is bootstrapping it and grinding it out and working long nights and putting his own money in the company to get it off the ground, that guy can't afford a mishire. Right. So if he does, it could sink the whole business in like in 10 seconds flat. So that guy who doesn't really really where you're in, where you're at in your growth, if you're you're new and you're trying to get to let's say five million dollars, you're, you're still in startup phase. You're probably grinding it out and the CEO's really hustling. One of the things they should be hustling for is the intake and the coaching and the retention of A players because that's the only way that a CEO can get from $5 million to maybe $10 million and beyond is to replace themselves with amazing people. So even maybe more important for a guy who's in startup mode or new business mode to get the right people on board, right? Why don't more right. of these CEOs and the people that you work with, why don't they put more time and attention into recruiting and hiring A players? Well, Are they the just too busy? I work with, the guys I do uh, work with, Josh, do, right? They get talent. And you need angles, right? You need an X factor in your recruiting. You need to do it differently than your competition or you get the same people or the rejects that your competition gets. So you need to build recruiting systems. You know, have you documented the roles? Do you know exactly where the mishires come from? Uh, my guys, you know, when we're uh, recruiting is a third of our business. We just took odds and they're, they're, they're one to three odds if this candidate that another recruiter has. Because we looked at the background. They, they have this hoppy background. They've been everywhere and they have no, they don't have a background of results. I would get rather get a junior person with bona fide results. I'd rather get the, the Girl Scout cookie seller who sells $2,000 a year of Girl Scout cookies without her mom's help. And, you know, and I'm, I'm being a little funny sure. here, but get that person as your sales manager rather than the clown who saw somebody else's work and half the time we find they're, they're claiming other people's deals. This happens all the time. People don't know how to interview. And you're going to get, if someone's been everywhere 18 months, guess how long they're going to be at your place? Yeah. 18 about months. 18 months. Right? Yeah. But because we think we're transcendental coaches and leaders, we're going to fix them and change them. Meanwhile, we don't have any coaching systems. We've not been professionally coached. And you're doomed to, to rinse and repeat and also have an 18-month hire. Got it. So when it performs the whole time they're there, by the way. Yeah, and just drags things down and tremendously. So, Rick, what are like, like coach me for a minute, right? I'm a CEO. Mm -hmm. um, we have about 30 employees, and we, we, we do millions and millions of dollars a year. We manage about 35 million dollars of private money. We have a mm -hmm. 175 million dollar portfolio. And I think I'm that transcend, you know, the leader that you just described. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we got a lot of A players in the room. Um, so what are some tips for making sure that we have a recruiting system, which I don't know that in my company is that we have a recruiting system, although we should. I do think we have X factors in the way we run our business and opportunities here. Um, so what are some tips for it, either me or our listeners starting to be a better recruiter or starting to select better ape. What's some real tactics to getting that done? Right. 
it is really knowing why the people who have been successful are successful. And being able to identify in a profile, and you gotta remember most resumes lie, right? So oh, yeah. we use top grading and what we do with the top grading, we have all the recruits put their information on a portal. And what's one, int- there's many interesting things to this. And I call that a results driven interview. Uh, I blog quite a bit on this. And we actually start in reverse chronological order. So most resumes, if you think their most recent jobs at top, we actually start in high school and we want that longitudinal view. People's backgrounds that make sense, make sense. Mm-hmm. If they take in a couple turns down the road. But if you start with the current job, usually you're satisfied and you, you know, maybe you pluck somebody from your closest competition, but you kind of, you fool yourself and you're like, you know, a year and a half looks like 10 years or a year and a half looks like five years. And you miss that the job before that was actually terrible, right? You, you have a bias because you're doing it in the wrong order. You want to build that up and you want to get a team. Don't do this solo. Don't pass people down the hall. Get your core hiring team and get as many candidates as you can humanly possible, which in 2019 is like three. I hate to tell people. Uh, we don't use tools like Indeed. We, we, we go for private people. We use big data tools and we pluck people. Uh, we, we pluck happy people who are well-adjusted at their current role and provide them Mm -hmm. something better. Nice. And we we vet for that results resume. And think of this, right? You have an A player versus a B player. You did one interview in the morning. And by the way, our interviews are are lengthier, but we have the whole team at once. So it's actually more time efficient for your exec team. And you all get good at talent together. And as a CEO, Josh, don't you speak first. You get the most junior A player in your team. And no B players can be in the room from your team because you'll pollute the water. Sure. And, you know, most junior A player, what do you think? Well, Shelly, the most junior A player says, well, I think Tony here did this and this. Well, what do you think of Tony's results, right? And we unpack it together and we we were able to actually make a decision. Okay, we're going to see Tammy in the afternoon. We're going to compare Tony to Tammy. Now let's look at Tammy. And if you can get that head to head, there are situations where you're like a sniper. You got you got one shot. And, and that happens a lot in 2018, 2019. It will continue to happen in 2020. So you get good as a team together and you start to see it's like a, it's like music, right? Music's comprised of the notes, but it's also comprised of the non notes. Those pauses and silences are what make mu- music work. Because mm-hmm. if you just had one constant note, it wouldn't be music. So you're looking for errors and omission. And it is so clear between an A and a B. An A player sounds like a highlight reel. They will tell you chapter and verse and you will not be bored. Make the interview three hours. And if it's three hours and you're not bored, it's definitely an A player. Got it. And it might not have to be a three hour interview, but we're going that deep. Prove that result. How did you get that? I sold $4 million. How'd you do it? Tell me about your biggest deal. Tell me about the deals that went bad. Find out everything in between. Find out what they inherited. All those, I know I'm using some sales examples. Sales is, is pretty much the toughest. On operations, you, you know, uh, it's interesting. Some resumes are written like they were spectators. You know, I learned this. I, I saw this. I was responsible for. I don't care about any of that. I want to know what you did. I want to know that you moved a $15 million production facility to a $20 million. And, and I want to know where all your battle scars is and how hard it was because a real combatant A player in, in the arena knows all that stuff. And right. it is fascinating you know, and, and, and by the way, here's my acid test. You're so excited about that candidate. Your spouse asks you when you come home for dinner how, how your day was. Oh, my goodness. We have to get Tamara. She First was thing so off the good. top of your head, right? First She's thing so good. Mind. I got to get her. And maybe, uh, you know, you're, you're following up. You've got to pursue these people. Uh, trust me, the top NCAA coaches are calling. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Duke alum. Krzyzewski, after winning a national championship, is texting Zion Williamson to make sure Zion's on his team in a couple of years. Like it was two years out. That's yeah. how hard those guys want it. Nice. Yeah, it's a constant uh, recruiting process, right, as the CEO, as the head coach, making right. sure. And what we find is we often, uh, the people that we hire, the people that we bring in that do really well, are often people that we've met in the past through a friend or through a relationship or referral. And we weren't really hiring at that time for that position. But they were somehow in our ecosystem. They were somehow introduced to us. Somebody knew of them. Somebody knew what they were looking for or they were really good at their job. And then when we opened up this position, someone is like, hey, what about blah, blah, blah? What about Natalie, for example? What about Mm -hmm. Natalie? 
We know Natalie is at her job. She likes it. She's killing it. But she might not be happy with what she's doing. There's maybe not a lot of upside. We're opening up this position for digital marketing. What about Natalie? We already know her. When she comes in, again, interview, first interview, highlight reel. This is what I got done. This is what I got done. I did this. I leveled up that. We made these sales. I helped to support these reps. And, you know, she could talk forever about all of her successes. And sure enough, relationship was there, came in, long interview, highlight reel. I mean, I'm very familiar with, with the top creating process and the interview, starting from their oldest job, working their way to the most recent job. We've done all those kind of things. And it works, man. It works. And when I find somebody that I can think can have a huge impact in our business, you bet you're right. When I go home, I'm like, Lisa, you're not going to believe this. Right. Yeah. Because we know you're you're already feeling this person can have a huge impact on your business, make things easier, make things faster, make more sales, whatever it is. Um, so really, just to kind of unpack and and debrief where we've gone so far with this conversation, Rick, is first of all, you got to have the job description in writing, in detail, know exactly what you want this person to do, right? And have mm -hmm. the systems Activity. driven. What's a week look like? What's a month look like? What's a day look like? Not responsibilities, not where you went to school, not that you need an MBA or a CPA. What are you doing? Right. Well, and then in yeah. the interview, you're ascertaining, are they doing that now? Right. What I like to say is when we're hiring somebody, I don't want people learning on the job. So I want somebody who's already done what I'm going to ask them to do. And the second thing is they have to have total passion for it, meaning like they would almost do the job for free because they love right. it so much. They've been doing it for so long. It's like they go home and they don't even feel like work is work because they love it so much. Of course, everybody wants to get paid. Not that they would work for free, but in generally they're feeling like, God, I, mean, I love this so much. I would do this in my spare time or I do this for free. For right. us, those are the two big ones, right? If somebody's already got the experience, they've done the job, one, two, they have passion for it. Third is culture, right? They gotta fit in. They've gotta they've gotta do again, you mentioned core values was a big part of what you mentioned. They're fitting in with the core competency of the company or the core mission of the business. They fit there. You get those three things right. Passion for the business, success in the past, core competency, and they you know, they love what they're doing and they've had success in the past. Those kind of things bring somebody in, they're going to have a big impact right away. Right now, right. somebody's in your business, right? How do you can we, keep can we, can we Before we go there, can we, there's an intermediate step, right? So you sure. select, is your onboarding process a true onboarding process where you make people successful? Because here's another thing, Josh, as the hiring manager, do you stick your mouth or have you vouched for this person, right? Are you going to stick your neck out that you're going to you know, do everything humanly possible, make them successful? Mm -hmm. And back to good leaders versus bad leaders, many won't, right? They're like, well, we'll see how they do, right? They've done the Pontius pilot, wash their hands. I want people with skin in the game. You know, you're not the chicken at breakfast. You're the pig. Right. You know, are you going to do everything, yeah. you know, and most leaders won't, right? So that is your onboarding process a true onboarding or is it a waterboarding process? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that. So onboarding, meaning again, you get back to systems, right? Are they learning the culture? What are we all about? Are they being trained on whatever technology and software that you're going to use? Does the hiring manager believe in this person? Are they being set up for success from day one that they walk into your organization? Right. This is it a training matrix? And beyond the soft stuff, and, and there's the culture in that, right? But uh, let's just take sales. You're not hiring somebody to use the old selling system, right? You're hiring for their success and the fact that they were successful in that patch. Mm -hmm. But I can't stand it when I get somebody, well, at the old company, we used to do it this way. If you got that person, you got the wrong hire. Right. You want somebody who, hey, uh, our old system works. Show me your system. Show me the Duke basketball system of your business. They should be coming, and, and by the way, have that playbook at the interview. You'll blow the A player away. Like, you guys have a playbook. I want to come work for you. They want to get people who want to follow your system. They don't get to change your system until they hit par. And they hit par, then they can optimize it. They do V2 or V3. But until they do, it's like cutting the water on a golf course. You don't go for the par five in four unless you can par it. Right. Because otherwise, you're dropping a lot of titleists in the water. Right. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, that playbook is huge, right? It gets back to, again, systems, written, documented. Here's your playbook. Here's how you're successful. 
This is the number of calls you have to make if you're in sales or the number of activities and number of appointments that you have to keep. Here's, the Here's how you scripts. count our seven yeah. actions. If it's production, right? So uh, we're, we're doing granite production now and you came from lumber production, right? You need to learn the granite production system. Mm -hmm. There might be a lot of analogs with that. Uh, maybe you had some good critical numbers and some things that worked and you are, you're taking your knowledge and then building on our system. And oh, by the way, document as you go. My newest and most powerful real estate investing book, The Flip System, is now available. And for a limited time, you can grab your free copy at getflipsystem.com forward slash podcast. Using the same proven principles, secrets, and investing strategies I'm sharing in this book, I've been able to personally close over 750 highly profitable real estate deals over the last 15 years, make over 400 private lender loans, raise over $30 million of private money, and acquire over 2,000 units of apartments. Get my newest book now for free for a limited time at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. That's getflipsystem.com slash podcast. Yeah, it, that's a huge part of it right there. I think so many CEOs are so busy because a lot of CEOs are in the business doing a job that they're not documenting the systems as they go. Right, because right. if you're if you're a CEO like me and you're you're in your business and you're working in the company all the time, you don't have time to select talent. You don't have time to create systems. You don't have the time to document as you go. So when people say, "Well, what does a CEO do?" That's exactly what you do: hire for talent, recruit and raise money. If you need to raise money in your company, you have to sell the banks or sell investors on what you're doing. That's a CEO's job. Recruit and hire talent we already discussed, and make sure that all the systems are are are, are documented. Right? Yeah. One of my favorite quotes um, is from uh, the book "Work the System" by Sam Carpenter, and he talks about in that book that the CEO's job is not to put out brush fires. Mm -hmm. It's not to put out brush fires. The CEO's job is to document all the systems to make sure to work outside and above the business so they can work on things like recruiting capital, recruiting talent, documenting the systems. They don't really have a job in the business every day of right. selling or production. And that's why people say, well, I don't have time for recruiting. I don't have time for A players. This problem is because you're in your business too much. Right. The job right. of the CEO is talent, first and foremost. Chief yeah. talent officer. And we abdicate that. We don't even delegate it. We usually abdicate it. And, and if you're an operations manager and you're abdicating that to, to the HR manager, uh, let me give you a wake up call. In most cases, the HR manager has no freaking clue what you really want, which is why you're spinning back and forth and shuffling around B player candidates. You got to take the time yourself. You got to get really good at talent. And the CEO who remembers what it's still like to be good at talent and holds their team accountable for it. And for whatever reason, people want to break the recruiting systems like crazy. Like they'll get, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll follow the whole top grade. They'll get the best ever recruits. And then some reason it's like, I'm going to drive without my safe belt or safety belt. Yeah. It blows my mind. It's like, wait, you just had fantastic best ever results. And now, now we've taken off the seat, the seat belt. It's crazy. It's like driving a NASCAR without a safety belt. And uh, I, I don't know where that comes from, but it's uh, you're messing with fire. I mean, yeah. you are messing with fire. Uh, the mistakes that I've made for sure, and I've made many, many in my my <laughs> career, is right. Even when you get it right, and like you're talking about the the recruiting process, the selection process, you get that right. Then there's the onboarding process, and you get that right. Then there's the ongoing coaching process. Like Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have been together now, what, 18 years or something like that? And they continue yeah. to go to Super Bowls every single year. Do you think that Bill Belichick stopped coaching Tom Brady nine years ago? Not at all. Not at he all. Did, he didn't stop, right? He still coaches them every day. Did you look at this? Did you look at your check down? Did you call a different play? Did you audible at the line? Based on the difference, the, the, the defense, here's something we, we, we would have done differently, or here's maybe three different options for plays that would have worked against this defensive set. 
It's not like he said after nine years, which and Tom Brady won Super Bowls, right? He's was he was the the greatest quarterback of all time years ago, not now, mm-hmm. but years ago. I'm sure, right, that he's still being coached. He's still being, you know, things are being pointed out. It's not like he can show up for practice and just goof off for two and a half hours while the rest of his team works hard. He's right. building held to a, a higher standard. So the, the last piece of this, right, is retention, retention and coaching of your talent to make sure that they stay and continue to get better. It's That's, that's what it really – makes people stay long term as opposed to the hamster wheel of, well, that guy didn't work. Now I got to go hire someone else. Right. So talk to me about retention. Yeah. And I'll use your Brady analogy. Uh, I just wanted to point out, I think Brady's now 42. So his body is going against him. Yeah. Don't tell me that. You're, I'm 43. I'm 43. Yeah, I'm older than you. Don't remind uh, me. Don't remind me. <laughs> I'm older than you. I want if people can let up, but I'm actually older than you. Yeah. Uh, but Tom, Tom works harder on himself than anybody else. He's the hardest worker there and that's his greatness. He knows he doesn't have a fixed mindset. He's a growth mindset. So he's down to diet. He's down to sleep. He's down to exercise any edge. And that's a hallmark of an A player. You're looking for any edge and think of it from a coachability standpoint, right? You, Josh, you and I meet similar people, right? You meet the the great business owners who are the most successful in the room. They'll talk to a guy like you and me and they're like, wait, wait a second. You're on something. Talk to me about that. Right? The arrogant ones shut down. I know, I know. But you look at the greats. They are so open to any edge possible. Uh, Business-wise, the Tom Brady's, the Roger Federer's. You look at the great athletes now who are winning against the clock. They are working harder than the younger people. Yeah. On themselves. Love it. So how is a CEO or a business owner or a top-level executive, what are some things that we can take into our business retention wise, tactical wise, like, is it, is it sitting with these, you know, your, your people that are working in the dirt, doing the work, whether it's in sales or production or whatever, is it like a coaching session every week? Is it monthly goals? Is it quarterly assessments? Help me understand what, what should we be doing that things that you've seen over the last 13 years that you've seen consistently work to help these A players continue to grow? Right. And continue to do better and then level up the rest of the organization with them. Right. Well, if I could answer that, let me do the antithesis first, which is what not to do. So if you want people to leave, make them work with idiots, be players, bozos, and give them crappy work to do. Got it. And and crappy work for a CEO means maybe you're flip-flopping, you're indecisive, you can't make a decision, you disempower people. That's all crappy executive work. So if you, wanna, if you wanna drive away your talent, make them work with bozos and give them undefined crappy work to do, or frustrating work. Got it. And so uh, to keep people the opposite, people, right? Let yep. them work with other amazing people who are right. goal-driven, who are pushing, who are looking for any edge. Because right. A players want to hang out with A players. A players don't even really want to hang out with B players, right? They want they to don't. hang out with the best. No. They'll work with A potentials. That's fun for them to develop them, but they hate working with B players. If you and, and so those of you on the call who have retention problems, it's because you have B players who are driving your A's out and you're giving them crappy work. Got it. Okay, so what should you be doing? You should be leading a strategic planning process. Build a strategic strategic planning framework, like the scaling up one page plan, that's the best one, where you're getting these A players. A players love to be part of the strategic plan. Now Got it. Here's a great acid test for, in fact, do you truly have A players on, on your team? A players are both strategic and they execute well. So nobody can be in the strategic planning room. By the way, I recommend you do that quarterly. And the cadence of meetings is an annual, a quarterly, a monthly management meeting that solves a big issue and reports out on progress to the quarterly plan, a weekly where you're also touching base on progress and you're handling kind of maybe more of a annoyance type of issue, handling one of those a week and then doing a daily huddle that cascades from the executive suite down to the front line. So that's a pulse in your organization and you're taking the strategic and you're taking it in the bite size executional chunks to propel your organization. And you'll know, you'll know by the visibility in that plan, we do this online in the cloud. If any of your listeners want to see what that looks like, 
it automatically color codes it, not just fit, false codes, right? Based on the work done is giving you the code. And I mean, an A player can be yellow, but the A player is the first one or not blaming anybody else. You know, I'm behind. I need to make that happen. The goal's important because the goal's in, intrinsically important to hitting the big goals, the BHAGs of the business. So they have to be done. And if someone's too busy, I call them the busy bees. Uh, the busy bees will kill you. If someone's just, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. That's an excuse. Yeah. Right. You can work with six clients a day. You could pump out a couple million dollars of production, but you're not busy. We ban the word busy in most of the businesses I work with. That is awesome. Um, well, listen, I, we need to kind of round third and head for home here. Um, I know there's some mat uh, materials and some freebies and some things you've already mentioned. So I want to make sure we memorialize that, give our listeners an opportunity to dive in with some of these uh, tools that you mentioned. Um, so where can people get more information from your website about just, you know, leveling up, top grading, hiring and retaining A players? Yeah, so uh, got a bunch of tools on the website. Uh, hear a lot of good things that there's a lot of resources there. So the website's aplayeradvantage.com. Josh, unique to your listeners, we have uh, aplayeradvantage.com slash podcast offers. There's three really good offers there, right? First one, there's a business assessment. Second, your uh, team members can build active accountability with an online course. And the uh, third one, if you're really serious about improving your business, you can get a half an hour with me, which is worth over $750. So uh, happy to, you know, give a business owner, you know, some, some advice and, and look at, you know, where some opportunities in their businesses. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. Aplayeradvantage.com slash podcast offers. There's three freebies there for you. Make sure you guys check that out. Jump in, use the material. Um, Rick, this has just been an awesome discussion. One of my favorite topics because you can only build a business with amazing people. Until the robots do all the work, we're all going to have to work <laughs> together, right? So Rick, thanks so much for joining us today on Accelerated Investor. I had a blast. Josh, same here. You asked some great questions. It really enjoyed your show. You've been listening to Josh Cantwell and the Accelerated Investor Podcast. Leave a comment on our iTunes channel and let us know what you want to learn next or who you'd like Josh to interview. While you're there, give us a five-star rating and make sure to subscribe so you can be the first to hear new episodes. Follow Josh Cantwell and his companies, Strategic Real Estate Coach and Freeland Ventures on all social media platforms now and stay up to date on new training and investment opportunities. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed dreamed of. Apply for coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com.